People keep coming in, so we'll just give them another minute. I'll we'll see. Here we go. I dial in. Hit start video. Tap the screen. Tap the screen. They can't see us over here, and we can't hear them. <laughs> All right, good morning, everybody. Good morning. My name is my name is Mary. We still got some folks coming in, so we might give another minute, but um, I'll just chat for a little bit. My name's Mary. I'll be your tour guide today through the world of owls. We're going to talk about owls of North Carolina. Um, and I think Why are you? I might have a few more going on. I'm sure y'all have all done Zoom before. I'm still learning it, but uh, if we could mute, mute everybody, or I might be able to mute you. If you have a question, though, you can uh, certainly ask it either through the chat or if you want to raise your hand or or shout out at me. Um, this will be pretty informal. Um, I love owls. I think they're really cool animals and uh, we'll, we'll learn a lot about them. Let's see, we still got some more folks coming in. That's awesome. It's a good looking crowd. Lots of folks. All right, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start and um, Go ahead and start. I have a little PowerPoint presentation to show. It's got some pictures and some animal noises in it. We're going to hear some owl calls. Uh, so we'll talk about owls. We'll talk about the owls that live around here. Some you might see or hear around your house. Um, and then we'll just talk about owls in general. And I have a few owl friends here with me. They're not alive. Um, and then we'll uh, dissect some owl pellets. Did everybody get their uh, packages with the owl pellets and tools and everything. Oh, awesome. I see some folks out there with them. Great. Let me go ahead and share what I'm looking at and we'll get started. And if anybody else joins us, we'll let them join us. All right. So um, I'm here to talk about owls today. If you can't tell, I've got a few owls behind me. I'll, I'll point them out as we go. But owls live all over the world um, on every continent except for Antarctica. So travel the world, you might see an owl. They might look different, uh, different places you go, but they're all over the world except for Antarctica. And things owls all have in common, they're all birds, right? So what does it mean to be a bird? It means they have feathers. It means they have two wings. Um, all owls are able to fly. Um, and they all lay eggs, right? Because they're a bird and they all have hollow bones um, that makes them lightweight and it's easier for them to fly. So that's uh, just some things that are in general about um, owls and birds in particular. But there's four types of owls that you're probably gonna see in North Carolina, four predominant species. There's others that come and go, but there's four that live here year round um, and that you might see around your house um, or if you come to a state park. So I'm a park ranger. I, I work at a state park at South Mountain State Park. So if you come visit, uh, you might see or hear some of these birds. So we're going to go over the four types of owls in North Carolina that you might see. And then we'll go over um, what makes them so special. And then we'll get into those owl pellets. All right. So the first owl is the eastern screech owl and this is the smallest owl we're going to talk about today this owl is about six to ten inches tall and i brought a tape measure i don't know if you can see me in my teeny little screen but ten inches that's how tall it is just ten inches so they're a short little owl um, they don't even weigh a pound they're just tiny little birds um, 
but they are they're cute they also have a, a wingspan about 24 inches so if you have a tape measure 24 inches that's about their wingspan so it's kind of interesting they're they're short but they got long wings that help them fly they do like to nest in trees so if uh if you see one in the forest you're probably going to see them in the forest they hunt by perching so that means they sit on a tree limb and they'll wait to see a prey right so prey are the animals that get eaten and then predators are the animals that eat other animals so all these owls are predators they're birds of prey okay so they eat other animals and we'll get into what they eat a little bit later so the screech owls um they nest in bird in hollowed out trees so you'll see them in the trees and forests um, they come in two color phases. You can see in this picture, the owl on the left is a gray color. And then the owl on the right is in the rufous phase or red. It's kind of a reddish brown. So those are the two types of owls, uh, two types of colors for the, the Eastern screech owl. Um, now they have an interesting call. Okay. I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna, Play the sound. So if you have the um, volume, uh, let's see if you can hear this. So that's the call for the Eastern Screech Owl. I kind of think it sounds like a horse winnowing. So um, if you're out in the forest and you hear that, if you think you're around a horse, uh, it might just be a screech owl. So I'll play it one more time for you so you can hear it and see if what see what you think it sounds like. Oh, that's pretty neat. I've I've heard them out in the woods at night. Um, they're unmistakable. You, you you hear that and you know it's an eastern screech owl. So those are. Those are our smallest owls around here. They're not the smallest in the world, but they're the smallest ones in North Carolina. And they're cute little, little birds. So we'll move on to the next owl. This is the barn owl, B-A-R-N, barn owl. And these are a bigger owl. So these owls, they're about 16 inches tall. So I'll get my tape measure out here. So they're about 16 inches tall. So they're a little bit bigger. Their wingspan can also be up to two feet. So it's pretty, pretty wide. The barn owl, you can see it's got a very distinct face. Can you see its face? It's white, it's bright white. And it's almost like a heart shape, the way the feathers form uh, the cone around their head. Um, so they have, that's what they're known for is having a white face and a white chest. Almost looks like a ghost flying through the forest. Now they hunt by flying. So they often soar through open spaces, through fields, um, and they're looking for um, snacks on the ground, whether it's gonna be any kind of movement, uh, they'll listen for it and they'll look for it, and then they'll, they'll hunt and jump on their prey and they'll use their sharp talons um, to catch it. So they're good hunters, all owls are good hunters, um, but these owls, you'll tend not to see them in forests, but in open areas, uh, they tend to, to occupy maybe barns, open barns like that, old houses that are that are empty, um, church steeples, things like that. They're op they like open spaces where there's lots of mice and things to eat. So I also have the call. Now, I want to warn you, the barn owl does not hoot, okay? It sounds more like a, like a screech or something, or a scream. So be prepared. This is not a hoot. <laughs> Is that weird? You might think that no. Okay, that is the barn owl. That is is kind of sounds kind of squeaky to me, and I had a little squeak at the end. Um, I've read that some people think it sounds like a screaming person. Anyway, that's another uh, distinct call. That you're probably not going to mistake in the woods. I'll play it one more time. This is the barn owl. <laughs> Oh man. All right. So that's the barn owl. You might see that in more open areas. 
Uh, we'll move on to another owl. Let's see what's next. Ooh, this is one of my favorites. This is the great horned owl. This is the largest one that we're going to talk about today. It's not the largest one in the world, but it's, it's one of the larger ones in North Carolina. And you can see how it gets its name. It looks like it's got horns on top of its head, doesn't it? Those are actually feathered tufts. So there's just feathers sticking up there. But the great horned owl is a large bird. It's about 25 inches tall. So I'll get my tape measure out. So ah, it's not even gonna fit on the screen, is it? It's 25 inches tall and the wingspan, I can't even get the tape measure out, it's 57 inches. So that's over five feet. So that's almost, um, that's almost as tall as me. That's, those are long wings. That's probably taller than some of y'all out there. So that's the great horned owl. They hunt by flying and they also hunt by perching uh, and watching for prey. So they're, they're adaptable. They live in a lot of different habitats, but their favorite uh, where they like to be is young woods. Um, so it's not quite the uh, mature forest, but young woods and then with open fields. So they, they kind of adapt to a, a wide range of habitats. Um, that's where you'll, you'll see them. Um, they are such a large bird, they'll actually prey on other owls. So uh, if a, a barred owl or something is in its territory and they hear a great horned owl, they usually vacate the area because they don't want to get eaten by the great horned owl. But they are um, higher up on the food chain and they are a big bird. So I've got a, a horned owl call. Now this might be what you think of when you think of an owl hoot, but they do hoot. So let's, let's listen to them. Ooh, that was two owls. They were hooting at each other. Oh, that was neat. I want to listen to that one again. Let's see what they're saying to each other. What do you think they're saying? They were probably talking about the weather and how nice the weather was. But that's the great horned owl. They're big. And I've got one here with me uh, in the background. Um, that's the great horned owl. I can, I can bring them up once the presentation's over. Let's see what the next owl is. Oh, this is another good, this is another favorite. I've got a lot of favorite owls. Uh, this is the barred owl, uh, B-A-R-R-E-D, barred. So sometimes uh, people think barn and barred are the same animal, but they're different. The barred owl is a beautiful bird. You can see on the picture on your screen, the barred owl, it gets its name from the brown and white bars of color. So on its chest, you'll see they're vertical. So the, the brown and white bars are up and down. And then right below its chin, the brown and white bars are horizontal. So they go side to side. So that's uh, part of their camouflage that helps break up their, their shape and helps them hide in the woods. But the barred owl, um, is not quite as big as the great horn, and it's a little bit smaller. It's a little bit bigger than the uh, barn owl, but they're about 20 inches tall. So, so that's not gonna fit on your screen. And then their wingspan is about 43 inches. So a little less than four feet. So it's still, those are some long wings for the small bodies, but these barred owls, they like mature forests. Um, they hunt by, by perching and also by flying. So in those mature forests, they have a lot of opportunity to feed. And let's take a listen to the barred owl. So this is a, a, another distinct call. Um, I hear this one a lot in the park where I work at South Mountains. And this one, um, I'll let you listen to it and then I'll tell you what I think it sounds like. Whoa, that was neat. I love the barred owl. So what I think it sounds like, I think it's somebody saying, who cooks for you? Who cooks for you? So can y'all do that at home? Can you go, who, who, who cooks for you? Yeah, <laughs> okay. I'm gonna play it one more time. Let's see if you can hear the who cooks for you in the call. Yeah, 
I heard it. It says, who cooks for you? Well, I'm a grown-up, so I got to cook for myself. But anyway, we'll move on. So these barred owls, are, they're just beautiful. I got a barred owl sitting down here. This one's been in a lot of programs, so he's, he's looking a little worse for wear. But they're neat animals. But so we're going to go into different adaptations that these owls have that make them so special and so neat. Um, I'm really excited about owls, and I love owls. So I hope uh, after the end of this, you'll see how neat they are. But we're going to talk about adaptations. And adaptations are simply um, a physical trait or a behavioral trait that an animal has or does that helps them to survive. So um, it could be, um, so for example, birds fly. So that helps them survive in a way that they're adapted to their environment and are able to travel and catch prey or they have feathers. So we'll talk about some of these um, adaptations that the owls have. So the first one are its feathers. So we talked about owls, all owls have feathers. Uh, and one thing about owls is these feathers help keep them warm and protect them from the elements. Um, it's kind of a shelter. But can y'all look in that top picture? Can y'all see the owl in that picture? You'll see that owl? That is the Eastern screech owl. That's the gray phase. Uh, and it is hiding its camouflage right there in plain sight. It's sticking out of the hole in the tree and it's camouflaged um, with its surroundings. So like I said, these Eastern screech owls are a small bird. So they get uh, preyed on by other larger animals. So this is great camouflage. And camouflage is how an animal blends in with its surroundings and can hide in plain sight. So that's what that uh, screech owl is doing right there in that tree. It, it's camouflaged in its surrounding. It's able to snooze, take a nap, look around, all without being seen. That's a pretty neat picture, I think. Uh, and then that picture below is a close-up of an owl's flight feather. So usually uh, most birds, their flight feathers, the birds that fly, are going to have a smooth edge. And when they fly, when they flap their wings, it kind of makes a whooshing sound. I don't know if anybody's ever heard that before, if you've heard a bird take off or if you've had a bird kind of fly over nearby. But it kind of makes a whoosh as their wing goes through the air. But owls, they have this fringe on the edge of their feather, on their flight feathers. Can y'all see that fringe? That uh, is, it kind of has a dampening effect on the sound. It breaks up the tiny little air molecules around the wing. So when they fly, it's silent. Isn't that amazing? They can fly without making a single noise. So why is that good? Why is that helpful? How does that help them survive? Well, you pretend if you're a little mouse minding your own business in the forest and all of a sudden you get snatched right up off the ground by an owl. Well, you didn't hear it coming, did you? Well, that is an adaptation that the owls have that helps them hunt. So they're able to sneak up on their prey and catch them um, before they know what's going on. It also allows the owls to fly silently so then they can hear what's going on around them and then they can find their... Uh, their prey around. All right, let's see what's next. <gasps> Vertebrae. So when I talk about owls to groups, to students or the general public at the park, one thing that usually comes up is that owls can turn their head 360 degrees all the way around their neck and look behind them. Well, that's partially true. Owls they can look behind them. So I want everybody to take a minute, just take a second. I want you to look, try to keep your shoulders in place and try to look over your shoulders. Either way, left or right. See if you can look behind you. Oh, how far can you get your chin? Can your chin go over your shoulder? Oh, oh my, not quite. Oh, can't quite. So humans, we can kind of turn our head 180 degrees. So from side to side, that's 180 degrees. It's a half circle. So owls can turn their head 270 degrees. That is three quarters of a circle. So if a circle is 360 degrees, the owls can do three quarters of that. So three quarters of the way, three fourths. So 270 degrees. So they can essentially look behind them without turning their body. Pretty neat. And the way they can do this 
is uh, their vertebrae. And those are the neck bones. So in humans, we have seven bones in our neck that makes up our, our, our neck and the backbone. They're called vertebrae. Owls have 14 in their neck. They have 14 vertebrae in their neck. Now, when you look at an owl, they look kind of short and stumpy in the neck region, but they got 14 little bones in there. And that allows them to look behind them without moving their body. So let me see. So that is, uh, that is how owls are able to look behind them. So their head's kind of like on a swivel. They've got a lot of neat um, mechanics going on in their neck. But that is one very neat um, adaptation that the owls have. I just think it is just so neat. All right, the next one. A lot of owls out there. You've seen pictures of them. Everybody knows they have a sharp beak and then they have sharp talons. So the talons are their toes. So their beak is short and downward facing. So it's not up in their face. It's short and downward facing so it doesn't interfere with their eyes. And they use that to tear their prey apart. So when they catch an animal, they're gonna take it, tear it apart and then they can swallow pieces whole. Their talons, their feet, they have four toes on each foot. So how many toes do y'all have? So most people are gonna have five toes on their feet. Uh, some people might have different numbers and that's all right, but the owls, they're gonna have four toes. They have two that kind of are forward facing and then they have two that are kind of back facing. But what is interesting about these owls, one of those toes from the back can pivot to the front so then they can have three in the front and one in the back and it helps them when they're walking on the ground or if they're perched on a on a tree limb then they can have uh, their talons to hold the limb and hold them upright so those talons are very sharp and they use those talons to pierce their prey so that they can kill their prey and then they eat it very strong hands to um, the way their their talons work it is amazing so they have sharp talons, sh sharp talons, and sharp beaks. And next up, we're talking about their eyes and their ears. And this is a picture. This is a barred owl. You can see the the brown and white bars on it. But you can see that we're looking at the barred owl from behind. So that's the rear. That's the back of the barred owl. And you can see that owl has turned its head to look right at us, right? So that is how they turn their heads. They can look behind them because they have those 14 vertebrae in their neck. They have excellent eyesight. So owls, I know they look fluffy, but they have eyes that are uh, kind of like tubes. And I don't know if y'all can see me, but the owl's eyes take up a lot of space in their head. Now, if I were a great horned owl and my eyes were the same ratio to my body as a great horned owl, then they would look kind of like that. I don't know if y'all can see me. That is kind of the size. If my if I were an owl, that's kind of how big my eyes would be. How much the size of baseballs? I don't have any baseballs around, but these are, are peanut butter jar lids. They're big eyes. They take up a lot of space in their head. Their eyes can weigh up to 5% of their body, which is a lot. If you think about it, our eyes, do not weigh 5% of our body. If you weigh 100 pounds, that's five pounds of your body weight right in your eyeballs. So. So their eyes are really good. They have rods and cones. There are two types of eye cells um, and it helps them see at night because they have a special retina as well in their eyeball. So we don't really see very well at night. That's because we have more cones than rods, but owls have a lot of um, rods in their, in their eyes. They don't have as many cones. So they probably see something kind of like black and white. They don't see a lot of color, but they can see movement really well. And they, at night, light is let into their eyes. They have that special retina. Very interesting eyes. Like I said, their eyes are more like tubes. They're not round. So they aren't able to move their eyes. Can everybody um, look straight ahead? Don't move your don't move your chin, but look to the left. Look to the right. Look up, look down. Owls can't do that. Owls can't move their eyes. Their eyes are stationary. So very interesting. So when they need to look around, they have to move their head. But it's not a problem because they got so many vertebrae, right? So they have really good eyesight. They hunt 
by sight. So they look for movement and they also hunt with their hearing. So does everybody here have two ears? Most folks have two ears. Owls also have two ears. But what is interesting about owls, a lot of owls, their ears are gonna be offset a little bit. So if they were to put sunglasses on, their sunglasses would be a little skewed, be a little crooked. So they have uh, one ear may be a little higher and the other ear may be a bit lower. And that is weird, why would that be? Well, that's so that they can hear almost in 3D. So you're gonna be able to pinpoint where the animal is. An animal, a little mouse could be scratching in the snow and it would be able to turn and pinpoint exactly where that mouse is. Really neat. Um, and also, if you look at this picture of the barred owl, you can see it's got um, kind of, it looks like two circles around its eyes. Those feathers actually form a cone and it funnels the sound to their eyes, to their ears, excuse me. So that all that sound gets funneled right behind their eyes is where their ears are. So another adaptation of the feathers is it helps funnel sound. All that, um, and they use that sound to help hunt as well. And some, like the screech owl, they may use those, uh, or the barred owl, they may use the sound to help escape prey as well. So very good adaptations to help them out. So we do, oh, look at that. Uh, that owl looks a little surprised, doesn't it? That's one of those great horned owls. So we talked about how they're nocturnal. So th what does nocturnal mean? Does anybody remember? It means they're active at night. Um, so they usually, well, these are, um, these owls usually hunt in the evening um, up till about sunrise. You may see them hunt in the daytime some as well, but they're usually out at night and they'll hunt. And so they have this, these eyes, they're, the rod cells and their eyeballs help them hunt at night and their hearing helps them hunt at night. So they are nocturnal. You'll see them around in the evening. All right. We're going to talk about their digestive tract. So that is one of the reasons you're here, right? So you can see what an owl ate. Well, in this picture, this is a barred owl. You can see the brown and white bars of color on its chest and head. And what does it have in its mouth? Can y'all see that? You see what that is? It's a frog. Yeah. So what do owls eat? I know owls are known for eating mice, rats, um, small rodents like that. Um, probably some rabbits. They eat other birds. They eat amphibians, like this barred owl has a frog. They'll eat lizards. They'll eat snakes. So they'll eat those reptiles. Um, they'll eat large insects. They eat all kinds of things. So they're very interesting. Um, so they're not too picky. Often, if something moves, an owl's going to eat it. Now, I don't know that they would eat a turtle because it's got a hard protective shell, but they could try. Um, but they'll, I've seen them eat um, all, all types of things. And what's interesting about owls, I'm sure you've all heard this, is that owls um, regurgitate an owl pellet, right? Have y'all heard that? So they have, owls have two stomachs. How many stomachs do we have? Just one, right? We just have one stomach, that's right. So owls have two stomachs. And what, how they eat, so we, we said they have a short beak um, and they have their talons, right? So they'll catch an animal. Um, they may, if it's a larger animal like a rabbit, they may pull it apart into pieces and then they'll eat the chunks of the body and, and they'll swallow it whole, right? Because owls don't have teeth. They can't chew. They don't, they're not able to do that. So they'll swallow their, their prey whole. And, um, and so they have two stomachs and that meat goes down into a stomach and it has some weak enzymes. So um, the chemicals in our bodies that, in our stomachs that break down the food that we eat turns it into nutrients that goes around our body and fuels us. These owls have very weak enzymes, so it's not able to break down everything that the owl eats. So let's think about what an owl eats. Let's say it eats um, a mouse, okay? What are the things in a mouse that an owl's not gonna be able to digest? Some of the hard, tough tissue. Um, it's not gonna be able to eat bones, right? Um, if that mouse has any teeth, it's not gonna be able to digest the teeth because they're too hard, um, any fur, anything like that, it's not gonna digest. So the owl's able to digest all the soft tissue, all the muscles, all the yummy guts, all that. They're able to digest all of that. But then all that hard tissue, all the hair, the fur, 
feathers, bones, teeth, all that kind of sits um, in one of its stomachs. And then after about 20 hours or so, um, that owl, as it's sitting there, just kind of regurgitates the pellet and it falls to the floor of the forest. So it's, it comes out in the shape of one of the stomachs. So um, why would we even care about this? Why, why are we interested in, in owl pellets? Well, it's gonna tell us a lot about the diet of the owl and what's out there, what animals are running out there, what the owl's eating, which is interesting. Um, so some folks, that's all they do. They study the owl pellets and see what's out there. Some folks like to go through an owl pellet and then reconstruct animals. It's kind of like a puzzle. So that's, that's what we'll do again. So are there any questions um, right now about owls? Anybody have any questions about owls? Um, uh, me, I planned this question mm -hmm. in the car, um, but where do you find all these owl pellets? Oh, that is a good question. So these owl pellets that you have, I believe they came from a scientific supply company. So oftentimes um, owls that are in captivity, uh, whether they're at a zoo or some kind of animal center or a rehab center or a raptor center or something, um, sometimes the folks will collect them from, from those centers. Uh, they'll kind of sterilize them or they stick it in a, like a microwave type machine or something, then they wrap them up and, and ship them out and sell them. Uh, that's a good question. But if you're out in the, in the forest and you find, um, if you're out in a walk or if you're in a barn or you see something, um, oftentimes, Owls will um, perch and roost in the same spot uh, while they digest, um, and they may find some pellets, owl pellets on the ground. But that's a good, good question. I appreciate your question. Okay, because we found an owl pellet when we mm. were walking. So cool. Yeah. Did you did you dissect it? My mom did. Oh, neat. That's we cool. We found snake scales in it. Ooh, that's awesome. I, I dissected a pellet one time that had um, a crayfish shell in it. So pretty neat stuff. They eat all kinds of things, things you don't think about. That's a great question. Thank you for that. Does anybody else have a question? You had a question in chat. How far mm -hmm. away can an owl see? How, oh, that's a good question. I never asked an owl that. Um, they got really good eyesight. So if they're in a forest, obviously their, their, their vision is gonna be limited by what's around them. But I would say several hundred feet. They're, they have really good eyesight um, and nothing that, like I said, they have a lot of rod cells. So they're really good at movement. Um, they see in black and white. So if there's any kind of shadow or any kind of movement, they, they can pinpoint it. Um, but that's a good question. I'd say a couple hundred feet. All right, what do owls eat? I see another question there. Kind of went over that a little bit. Um, pretty much anything that moves, they're going to eat. So they're known for eating mice, things like that, small rodents, um, rabbits, other birds. Uh, they'll eat snakes. Um, they'll eat fish, um, amphibians, like um, frogs, toads. Um, yeah, so they eat a lot of different things. Uh, pretty much anything that moves, they're going to be able to, to eat. And um, so good question. How many babies can they have at a time? Good question. So owls are gonna, well, it depends on the owl um, and the species of owl. So usually it's gonna be anywhere between, they'll lay anywhere between three eggs and 13 eggs. Um, so that's a good question. Uh, so then usually they're not mature enough to lay eggs until they're between one and three years old. So it takes a little bit of time uh, for that, but uh, you, anywhere between three and, and 13 eggs, I'd say. And do they eat chickens? I don't think they're known for eating chickens like um, like hawks are. I'm sure if chickens were out um, and they had an opportunity, they would. Um, but I don't think they have the reputation like the hawks do for getting into chicken yards. Um, I haven't. I haven't. Um, I'm trying to think. I've never heard of anybody. My sister has chickens. She's always telling me about the hawks that circle around. But. And is Eva Wingdale real? I don't know Eva Wingdale. Somebody else know who that is? Oh, and Jennifer said that yesterday her tiny dog was walking and an owl swooped down at her. And could they take a dog? It's, it's, it's very, oh, from the owl, okay, thank you. 
it's it's very likely. Um, I would say it's probably going to be a great horned owl um, or barred owl, and it had to be a very small dog. Um, if you're walking with them, I'd, I'd say if you're walking with your dog, I'd say it's, it's they're probably going to get scared off um, by that, but they may try it. Um, again, I've, I've heard it more often with um, large birds like hawks and things like that, but it, it is possible. From the Owl Diaries. Oh, so that's Eva Wingdale's from the Owl Diaries. Well, I haven't read that, so I'll leave that up to y'all if y'all think that Eva Wingdale is real. I like that name. Great. Y'all had some good questions. Any other questions out there? Uh, Tara, you have your hand up. Oh, I might have to unmute. I can't hear you. Um, do owls always live in the forest? Do owls always live in the forest? No, they don't. Um, some owls, like the barn owl, they like open spaces. So uh, some owls actually, like out west, there's some owls that are ground dwelling. So they actually will burrow in the ground. They'll take over other owl or other animals' burrows in the ground, and they'll burrow in the ground. So they usually live out in the desert, these ground dwelling ones. Um, so not all owls live in the forest. That's a good question. Here in North Carolina, most of them live near um, the forest, but out west um, in the desert, there are species that live out there. I like the question. All right. And how big are owl eggs? It depends on the owl. So you can imagine the screech owl, which is only 10 inches. Um, let me go ahead and if I can stop sharing, maybe you can see me better. So some, the, the the screech owl is what, 10 inches? So that's a small bird. So it's gonna have smaller eggs. Um, the great horned owl, like this guy back here, they're gonna have a little bit larger eggs. I'd say they're about that big. They're, little, they're larger than a chicken egg. So I don't know, was that a tennis ball maybe? What's interesting about owls, they don't typically build their own nests. Um, they usually take over nests or areas that other animals have built and then they just kind of take over that. Um, kind of interesting. I found that interesting as I was reading. Okay, any, let's see, how fast does an owl fly? Oh, that's a good question. All right, um, and I don't know the exact speed. They're, they're quite quick. Um, they have a big sternum bone on their chest that helps support all the muscles for their long wings, and they, um, they're quite quick. They're not like a peregrine falcon, that is super quick. Um, that's a good question. We could look it up. I've got some owl books behind me, or maybe one of y'all could look it up in a book when you come to the library. Uh, what's the other stomach for? So the second stomach kind of helps digest um, all the soft tissue and things like that. So the, the undigested area, like the hair, the fur, the nails, the teeth, all that kind of stuff kind of sits in the first stomach and then it regurgitates. Are there any owl species currently endangered? Yes, and that's a good question. I don't have it right off hand. They're, they're all protected since they're birds of prey. They're all protected. Let me see if I've got the endangered one. I don't have it written down here. Um, that's a good question. Okay. Do they stay in one spot all year round? They do. These owls um, that we're talking about, they don't migrate like other birds. Um, we do get some owls that will, um, like the snowy owl will come down from the north, from the Arctic. Um, because it's so cold, they'll come down a little bit farther south, but they don't really uh, live here year round. Um, but the owls that are here, like the great horned, the barred owl, the eastern screech, they stay here. And they really don't migrate. They don't move very far. I think one study said they found the owl, you know, every time they found the owl is within six miles of the original spot. So they really don't travel too far. Um, all right, we'll do a few more questions and then we'll get to the owl pellets. So do they stay in one spot all year? Yes. Is the owl pellet real bones? What do you think? These are real owl pellets coming out of real owls that eat real animals. So they're real bones, real fur, and we're gonna figure out what those animals are. And can owls eat big animals like foxes? I'm gonna say no, they're not gonna eat the foxes. Uh, they may eat um, like a baby fox, a kit, if it's very small. Um, 
but I wouldn't, I would say that foxes are gonna be too big. Um, but good questions. All right. I have a question. Yes. From my brother. Okay. He said, do you have, have you ever found bones in owl pellets? Owl pellets? Have ever found bones in owl pellets? Yes, I have. I've got um, an owl pellet here that I have that's been dissected. I'm not sure if you can see that. Oh, these are bones. Um, but what y'all are going to do, does everybody have their owl pellets? It should be in a kind of a I do, Okay, I don't have my owl pellets. The library hours near where we live are weird. So yeah, we're getting our owl pellet kit today and we're going to do it tomorrow. Oh, okay. Well, that gives you something to look forward to for tomorrow. So um, there's lots of resources out there. If y'all want more information on the owls, um, you can see there's some books behind me. I know uh, some of the, the owl books have been checked out here. But um, come by the library, and I, I know the staff here will be happy to help you look up some information and get more owl books. So everybody should have um, their owl pellet. I do not. Some forceps or tweezers, and the wooden tool to help dissect. All right, so um, if y'all have an also uh, ID sheet, I see some of y'all have the ID sheet as well. So that's gonna help us determine what animal this owl pellet, this owl ate and turned into a pellet. So go ahead and unwrap your owl pellet. Doing the owl pellets, okay? If you want to, if you want to unwrap your owl pellets, if you want to put it on a piece of paper or if you have a plate or a tray, that works great. So we can unwrap it and we'll see what's in there. So on the outside, it's probably going to be mostly fur, and it might just look like a hairball. If anybody's got a cat at home. I've got two, so I'm very familiar. Um, if you just observe it, we're all scientists, right? So observe it and you can, I see teeth and bones already in this owl pellet. Very interesting. So what you can do is you can just kind of take your owl pellet and break it up, just pull it apart, right? You can pull it into big chunks and then you can get down to your workstation. And then you can use these tools, your, your forceps, and help pull out bones. Oh, I've got something small here. Look, you can see that little, I got like a little rib bone. So if you wanna separate, take some time, separate all the fur from the bones, from the teeth. Here's another little bone. This looks like a leg bone. You see that? And then you have the ID sheet. You can start matching up the bones that you have with the pictures on your ID sheet. And remember, as you're doing this, you're a scientist and you're doing a study on what owls eat, what their diet consists of and what kind of animals are running around wherever this owl lives. Are y'all finding some good stuff? I hope so. I found another leg bone, I think. A couple ribs. So you're able to just kind of pick these out of the fur. I know I just can't quite get my camera down low enough to show you how I'm working but I trust that y'all can, can take care of it. And if you have any questions, you can certainly uh, put it in the chat or let me know. And I have found, I'm gonna clean it up a little more, but I have found a jawbone and this is to a rodent. And I know that because if you look at the jawbone and the front teeth of the jaw, the long front teeth, I'm gonna clean it out just a little bit. The front teeth of rodents are orange. They have an orange color because it's have a lot of iron in it. Oh, I've got a loose tooth in my jaw. 
the fairy, tooth fairy is going to come visit this one. So these rodents, the front tooth in their jaw, if we were a rodent, our front two teeth on top and bottom would be kind of orange from the iron. But so I've got a jaw here and the front tooth is orange. So it means it's a rodent. So which rodent is a good question. I'm not sure. There's all kinds of different rodents out there. Could be a little mouse. I'll put that jaw to the side and see. I've got about three ribs so far. Lots of fur. So I know it's a mammal, right? Because mammals have fur. I did a quick Google search and it looks like spotted owls are endangered. Is that Southwest? Is like Washington State? Yeah, and some burrowing owls. Not really anything close to us, I don't think. Okay, awesome. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. That's right, the spotted owl. There's lots of controversy over that years ago. Oh, I have found the top part of a skull. So I had found the bottom jaw earlier. Now I have the top part. I don't know if y'all can see that. I'll clean it. I'll work on it and clean it up a little bit. But there's the top of the skull. So that's where the brain would be in there. And there's this eye socket. So then it's front teeth. Has anybody found any scales or anything other than fur and bones? Anything besides mammals out there? Yeah, I think the, the mammals are going to be the most common because there's so many of them out there for the owls to find and eat. So satisfying. Let me clean them off. Did anybody want to share what they've found so far? Have anybody identified any particular bones? Oh, nice. Oh, it's a skull. That is cool. Erica's got a skull. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Mine is Look. Cool. Oh, somebody found a jawbone. Excellent. Ah, yeah. That's cool. Yeah, so these rodents, they'll have the orange front teeth, long front teeth. And the rodents' teeth, they never stop growing. So I don't know if anybody's ever had any pet mice or gerbils or hamsters or anything like that, you got to have something in their um, living space to help them chew because they're like beavers. They're always chewing. Their front teeth keep growing and they have to chew and chew and chew to keep them in check so they don't grow past their other teeth so they can open their mouth. So, so I've got a little, I've cleaned off this front teeth. I don't know if you can see the front teeth there. I found a bone. Oh, look it. Cool. That is cool. Look, I found this lab. Black piece. Do my family vertebrae? Those are tiny. They're hard to. Oh, I found another job. So these these owls, when they sit and they eat, they can eat multiple things. So in a in an owl pellet, you may find the bones to multiple animals. So if your puzzle wasn't hard enough, we're gonna add the diff to the difficulty level.
Yeah, you can. Does anybody find any feathers? Mm -hmm. Feathers out there? Okay. Whoa, look at that. Let me compare some. Oh, that's a tiny one. I found a third lower jaw, so I think I have multiple animals in my. I'm strong. I can stand because I can see the. Look, mommy. Mm -hmm. I found a bone and then on and off. I saw a there you go, Brian. Oh, it's so funny. Hmm? What's that? No. My owl was a well-fed owl. I found two skulls. There must be two animals in here. Does anybody ever hear owls in their backyard? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, do too. I hear the barred owl a lot. That's the one that says, who cooks for you? That's the one I hear most often. All right. Oh, it looks like somebody found three different paws. Oh, goodness, you must have a full set. Here's another jaw. I've got two skulls and four lower jaws, lots of ribs, tiny little ribs. I have some kind of rodent. Stand out of here. It's not time. I put an email address in the chat. We would love for you to send us pictures of what you found inside of your owl pellets. Did you get the email address? Watch out for Liam. Oh, here's a scapula. You got scapula written down on your ID shape, sheet. Does anybody know what a scapula is? That is the bone that makes up the back of your shoulder. So it's on the back here. So that is how, that's what you'll feel when you move around. Does anybody find any pelvis bones? Those are your hips. I haven't found one of mine. It might have been crushed though. Lots of ribs, lots of tiny ribs. And lots of fur. So I know um, 
Catawba County Library will be doing this program again in July. If you have any neighbors or friends that uh, want to participate, they can sign up. We have a couple programs next week. We have um, Tuesday night, if you've read your 300 minutes, you can pick up your voucher for the Crawdads game and turn that voucher in for a ticket at the game. Um, so you'll wanna do that before Tuesday. And then Wednesday morning, Stretch and Grow is doing a virtual program. So you can move a little bit, um, do some yoga and some different things with Stretch and Grow. And then July, we do have um, the OWL program again and we have Mr. Chicken's Barnyard Review, which is supposed to be really funny. There's music and puppets, and um, that one's gonna be really fun. And in early August, we have the North Carolina Aquarium talking about turtles. Turtles, I love turtles. Um, do you, so, I think uh, Sunday was Father's Day, right? So, how do uh, how do the young turtles call their fathers to wish them a Father's Day, Happy Father's Day? Do you might know that. How do turtles call their parents? Yeah. On their shell phone. <laughs> yeah. On their shell phone, I know it. This is the kind of jokes you get with the park ranger. Crazy. Look, it's done with the bone. Oh, right. There's another leg bone. Let's see. I've covered up. Ah, this is a hind leg. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I got a couple of rodents. So I know. Um, Pamela, oh, a chicken. <laughs> Somebody's got a chicken out there. <laughs> Does your chicken have a name? Sunshine. Sunshine. Oh, good. That's great. Oh, no. <laughs> All right, so I'm about out of time, but um, I encourage y'all to keep dissecting your pellets. I know there's tons of little things. I just found a little vertebrae. They're tiny. Um, but keep dissecting. If anybody's got questions, um, we got a few minutes to answer. Um, but I, again, my name is Mary, and I am a park ranger at South Mountain State Park. So if anybody wants to come visit, uh, come on out. Uh, we have lots of things to do there. We have hiking. We have a river for fishing and playing in. We have camping, backpacking, all kinds of stuff to do. Uh, picnicking. I know you've got parks here in Catawba County, so lots of things to do outside. And I hope you keep reading. Get those minutes in of reading. I know it's summertime, but you don't get to take time off from reading. Uh, if you need more resources on owls, come by the library. There's books here. Uh, some online resources. There's a website. It's allaboutbirds.org, I think. Um, it's by Cornell University, and they have great pictures and videos. They have all kinds of bird uh, calls and stuff. There's a bird app that I use um, that is by the same folks at Cornell. It's called the Merlin Bird app, um, and I use that a lot to identify birds I see and, and look up calls. So lots of resources out there. Oh, uh, thanks, Jennifer. I think it's a beautiful park, too. Um, any more questions about owls or the park or anything like that? Remember to uh, share some pictures with that whoops, with the um, email address in the chat. I have found some great stuff. I'm pretty excited about this. I've got a couple skulls and jaw bones, lots of ribs, scapulas. Oh man, and a lot of fur. I'm not quite sure what to do with the fur, but lots of cool bones.
Can you guys give me a thumbs up if you learned something new today? Mm -hmm. Awesome. And then thank you so much, Ranger Mary, for joining us today, talking about owls. I learned stuff. Well, thank you for having me. I hope you all enjoy uh, dissecting the rest of your pellets. Uh, come visit me at the park and uh, get your friends and come by the uh, library and, and do some fun activities. So thank you all very much. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Wait, wrong, wrong button. <laughs> bye. Oh, bye, Sammy and Vinny. They were waving. <laughs> Take a picture of all the bones I found. This is cool. Okay. I'm going to stop the recording. Okay.